Hi everyone, this is Anil Bhatia again from PACT. Practical Architectural Training Fun Begins, which is the division of ADS, Architects Design Studio. In the past four videos on air conditioning and later on three more videos on waterproofing, we have tried to impart the basic conceptual knowledge required by interns and freshers. This is our last video on waterproofing. Though we have already explained how to waterproof terraces and basements, today we need to understand some other technical details about waterproofing. Details such as construction joints where leakages need to be controlled. Details such as injection grouting and also details such as DPC and also vertical DPC. Let us start with leakages due to construction joints, which must be tackled during construction. Have a look at the RCC wall diagram on the left. When a RCC wall is constructed, the whole wall cannot be constructed in one go. Reinforcement is tied in parts in height because casting has to be done in parts. Normally it is done four feet at a time in height. The reason is that vibrator insertion is difficult in height more than four feet. If larger heights are casted, then concrete remains porous. You can see on the left because vibrator does not reach that zone. So the diagram on the left shows that the first joint should be at 12 inches above the RCC raft and the second such joint should be 4 feet above the first joint. Now these joints are inevitable. So how do you make sure that no water enters from these joints. For this, there is a material called water bar. There are two types of water bars. The first one is a non-swellable bar and the second one is a swellable bar. Let's understand what exactly a water bar is. The non-swellable water bar is a strip you can see on the left. It's a strip which is kept vertically as shown in the diagram on the left. The material could be PVC, SDP, rubber and even an MS sheet. One type is shown on the left. This water bar helps in sealing the RCC joint and does not let, it, let the water penetrate inside. Then there are swellable water bars. Its size is very small 5 mm into 10 mm or 10 mm into 10 mm. Smaller than non-swellable water bars. Normally these swellable bars are made of bentonite and butyl rubber. As soon as water comes into contact with these water bars, they swell up to almost 700% of their original size and do not allow water to pass inside through that joint. And they come back to the normal size when the water recedes. We have understood how important it is to take care of these construction joints. Next, we should also understand that there is a limit to how much movement the waterproofing material can take. In fact, the structural engineer has to understand this point. The junction between the RCC wall and raft is so designed that this joint movement is reduced so much that it can be taken care of by our waterproofing material. The bending stresses 
and all such junctions have to be designed accordingly. We also have to take care of the punctures we make in the RCC walls for pipes. These pipes are for a lot of purposes. Sometimes there are sewer lines as shown on the left and sometimes there are rainwater lines. These could be air conditioning pipes connected with the cooling tower and so on. So we have to seal these joints too with proper chemicals. In the first video on waterproofing, we had talked about DPC, dam proofing course. Now let us understand this. Long back, only two areas were treated for protecting water entering our houses. One was DPC at the plinth level and one was treating the terrace so that water does not enter through the roof. Let's see the section of a small house which has no basement. This is a section through the plinth. This is shown on the left. Water tries to enter from the bricks in the foundation, which is the weakest point by absorption from the surrounding earth. We have to stop that so that it does not spoil our walls, which are shown there in red with dampness. Here water is stopped by creating an impermeable layer exactly at the finished floor level as shown in the section. This material was again charcoal. Long back charcoal was the major material used for waterproofing. Later it was PCC mixed with chemical additives laid over the brickwork, a two inch thick layer of PCC. Now let's look again at the section. The external areas are normally at a lower level than the plinth level. In this drawing, the plinth level is at 2 feet 6 inch and the exterior level is at 1 feet 0 inch. So water can penetrate sideways and you will see dampness below the DPC on the exterior wall. Hence, vertical DPC is also required. You can see that vertical DPC in the section. In some cases, it is better to have two horizontal DPCs and they are connected with a vertical DPC. <clears throat> this seems more logical if we have to make sure that we don't have dampness on the exterior wall. In our last video, we had mentioned how pores in concrete can be filled up by injection grouting. This should be studied in detail as this becomes a very important method when external waterproofing fails. So let's see how this works. Basically, injection grouting is a process of filling the cracks, pores or any honeycomb in concrete. Sometimes it is used for masonry also, but it is mostly used for concrete pores and cracks. The purpose is mostly for waterproofing, but it is also sometimes used for strengthening the structures. This is normally done under pressure. The grout is a flowable material, liquid form. There are different types of grouts. Cement grout is the most common used, but there are polymer cement grouts, epoxy grouts and polyurethane grouts also. Normally, there are two components which have to be mixed before injecting in the concrete walls or floors. These two components are mixed in a limited quantity 
and this is to be used quickly before gel formation takes place mostly this mixing is done with a mechanical stirrer which is shown there and then poured into the machine's container which is then injected with pressure but in more advanced systems the mixing is done in a continuous manner in the head of the machine which is shown there after the pumping but just before it leaves the gun in such a procedure of mixing even very fast setting adhesives can be used now let's see the procedure you can see in the diagram small holes are drilled with a minimum diameter of 2.5 to 5 cm these are called ports the spacing between the holes is generally between 6 inches to 12 inches but the spacing can increase to 24 inches in larger areas this spacing is usually as per need and judgment of the applicator in case of cracks visible on walls the ports are drilled along the cracks and in spaces between the ports the crack is sealed by applying epoxy sometimes a v groove is made along the crack and the v groove is filled with epoxy in case of cracks which are passing through and through the structure the procedure of making the ports and filling the cracks is done from both sides the next procedure is to flush the ports with water with a pressure the first reason is to wet the interior surfaces and clean it the second reason is to check the epoxy applied to cracks later and see that it doesn't fail or leak from some side and lastly flushing helps identify the flow pattern in different ports now the nipples are fixed on the holes these are ports so the nipples are fixed on the ports in case pressure of grouts is large you need nipples we are ready to start the process by connecting the pipe to the nipples this pipe is connected to the main pressure pump in case of horizontal cracks the grouting process can start from any end but in case of vertical or diagonal cracks the grouting has to start from below at the lower end <clears throat> as soon as the grouting for one port is complete it is sealed and plugged before moving to the next port here we must understand that we as architects are supposed to know the concepts only we are not technically competent to do the practical job ourselves and it is best left to the specialist vendor or applicator but in case he is not following the procedure properly we should be able to identify this waterproofing is an endless subject but i am sure that once the basics which i have explained if they are clear then you can proceed with the learning and you can be confident about the subject our mail id is mentioned below and you are free to ask any questions on the subject our colleagues at ads shall be more than happy to solve your problems now once again when we end any topic we are teaching to our interns one of the interns sings a song so here is priyanshi chauhan singing a lovely song for all of you Oh
क्या यही प्यार का है सार सो आसमानों को और दो जहानों को छोड़ के आई तेरे पास सो आसमानों को और दो जहानों को छोड़ के आई तेरे पास दिस टॉपिक वाटरप्रूफिंग is over and we shall soon start the next topic how to read structure drawings we shall also understand sight related problems in tying reinforcement and also certain methods of shuttering to be used at sight and also procedures to be followed in pouring the concrete we shall be looking into only rcc structures till then bye take care